All right, so let's uh, let's we're back here with uh, plane motion, translation, and rotation. And here's my little kinetic energy equation. And uh, um, you know, another way to look at this kinetic energy problem is is, uh, is for instance, let's just take you know this is kind of a popular example problem. But if you had like a, a bar, a slender rod, or ladder, or whatever you want to call it, you know, leaning against um, a wall and the ground here. And, you know, if you release it from rest and it starts to slide down here, we'll call this point A, call this point B, and it has some velocity here, VB. Uh, you know, we also know that there's a mass center here, G, that has a velocity here, VG, here. Okay. And we could go through and calculate, you know, this thing has an angular rotation associated with it or angular velocity associated with it. And we can go through and plug and chug and, and uh, calculate this kinetic energy of this rigid body just by, you know, looking at the, the mass center and, and angular velocity and the moment of inertia, uh, the mass moment of inertia of the slender rod. Um, another way to look at this is also just to look at, to find the instantaneous center of rotation. And, and you know, one way to find the instantaneous center of rotation is to draw perpendicular lines from the velocity vector here of places that we know. And usually we know A and B. We don't necessarily have a good intuition about the uh, mass center G, but still, this would be the instantaneous center of rotation here, and then we know that all the, all the, the, the motion, if you will, or the velocity of all the rigid body points can be described at that instant with this uh, angular velocity about the instantaneous center of rotation. And, uh, um, and using the same kind of uh, uh, approach as before, you know, we would know that this, uh, this VG, this VG, VG is equal to you know, omega times r g from the mass center. This mass center, and I'm sorry, not the mass center, but the instantaneous center of rotation. If I plug that into my kinetic energy equation here, if I just plug that into this vg over here, you know what I'm going to get is just, you know, things are going to happen just like last time, but I'm going to essentially get that the kinetic energy is one half the moment of inertia, uh, mass moment of inertia about the instantaneous center of rotation times omega squared. And this will be my, uh, my kinetic energy of this rod leaning against the wall under in plane motion and uh, um, and that that's just another way to look at uh, plane motion if, especially if you have uh, if you can locate the instantaneous center of rotation of the rigid body um, let's see let's look at a, a, an example maybe a quick example here just to put some numbers and things into perspective so if I have here let's say let's take a, a wheel a wheel here uh, with the mass center here that's rolling and has a velocity here, you know, VG. This is a, a simple example here. And some, we'll call this, I don't know, let's make this like one meter per second. And then omega, some angular uh, velocity here going the other way. Um, omega of, let's, you know, like 10 radians per second here. And, uh, um, and so I want to calculate the kinetic energy of this, and this, this here, this kinetic energy, and this, let's call this, give this thing a radius. Uh, let's say the radius of this is, you know, um, I don't know, like uh, let's call it like one meter. <laughs> it's a kind of weird looking wheel, and uh, um, and so I, you know, I could just go ahead and calculate this here. This would be t t is equal to one half, and the mass. Let's take the mass of this wheel, mass to be. Uh, 10 kilograms, one half times 10 kilograms times the VG, one meter per second squared, plus the instantaneous, or the, not the instantaneous, but the mass center of, of, of this disc. We'll call this a thin disc. So if you look usually in the appendix or somewhere in the inside cover of your textbooks, you'll get you know, you don't have to go through and try to derive the mass moment of inertia for each of these uh, typical rigid bodies, but uh, you just, you know, this, the instantaneous, uh, I'm sorry, the mass center of rotation, the mass moment of inertia of this disk about a center at G would, it would just, rotation about G would just be um, one half m r squared. And so this right here, this would be we would plug simply right here for this one half times one half m 
r squared times uh, 10 radians per second squared. 10 radians per second squared. And then this, uh, um, and you know, this mass here is, is 10 kilograms, and this r is is one meter. And so if I if I go through again, I just plug and chug. This is going to be five uh, kilogram meter squared per second squared plus one fourth um, times ten kilograms times one meter squared times one hundred radians per second squared, and that's what one thousand divided by four is two hundred and so this is going to be equal to this whole thing, this T, the kinetic energy of this wheel and the way that it's moving is, is going to be 5 and a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So this is essentially a joule, a newton meter um, plus one fourth of 1,000, which was 250. And hopefully the units work out here, newton meters. And this, the total kinetic energy of this rolling thin circular disk is equal to 255 newton meters so that would be the kinetic energy of this thing okay so that's just a quick example and then maybe we'll do something a little bit more involved next okay see you next time